Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my snow videos. This one is the one I'm assuming everyone's been waiting for. Uh, Self-arrest with an ice axe. Uh, for this exact video, I'm gonna have an ice axe, like I said, and I'm not gonna be wearing crampons on my boot. Um, another thing I've done to prepare myself is I put on all my rain gear, some rain pants, rain jacket. It's pretty nice uh, if you <laughs> can set yourself up for um, the most likely scenario, then it's nice to practice that. But the most likely scenario would involve getting snow everywhere and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to wear my rain gear. I also have a helmet on because it's nice to have a helmet on when you're doing stuff like this. Uh, the reason why you don't wear crampons is in case uh, those crampons could get caught on whatever snow or ice that you're sliding over. Now that you should be practicing self-arrest on ice, but that can break your ankle, hurt your leg, or flip you over, or get yourself into a bad situation. So uh, it's nice to not have crampons on while practicing self-arrest if you can't avoid it. For practicing self-arrest, I've chosen this slope. This is the one I just demonstrated how to glissade on. It's a pretty fairly steep slope. Uh, but another thing you want to watch for while you're practicing uh, self-arrest is a good run out. So you can see if you look all the way down here, there's no big rocks, there's no big trees or wells or whatever that I'm going to fall into. Uh, I am in between these two trees right here, but my body is going to be sliding along the glissading path and that's going to help funnel me through the trees so I'm not worried about hitting those on the way down. This is something to consider because self-arrest is definitely something you want to practice before you're out there and you actually have to do it for real. So the way how self-arrest works, uh, generally uh, we only talk about one exact specific way to self-arrest, but they all sort of work under the same procedure. If you look up Freedom of the Hills or another mountaineering book, you'll see like six or seven different ways of self-arresting based on different positions your body's in. There's feet first facing the sky, there's feet first facing the snow, head first sky, head first snow, it's left side, right side, there's a bunch of different ways you can fall down snow. But ultimately all the procedures for uh, self-arrest involve turning yourself so that way your belly's on the snow and placing the axe in a certain way so that way you can slow yourself down. Also when you're wearing all this waterproof stuff you tend to slide a lot faster in the snow. So what we want to do is minimize our surface area on the snow. So I'm going to be holding the axe in self-arrest mode where the pick is facing behind me. This is kind of the most common way I hold my axe, but I've been known to flip it around too. Uh, what I do is uh, I have it in my right hand in this case. So I'm going to bring that axe up, diagonal across my torso. The adds part of the axe, I want to tuck in between my shoulder and my head right here. So instead of being along your collarbone where it could do damage, it's up and not touching your body at all. The shaft of the ax is diagonal against my body and my hand is on the lower part of the ax. Some schools will teach putting your hand over the spike of the ax so that it doesn't come in and gore you, but that just sort of depends on who you learn from. I think I personally don't really cover up the full spike in my hand but uh, my hand is pretty close to the spike anyway, so it doesn't really, it doesn't provide a hazard for me. This also depends on the width and length of your body, as well as what ax you have. You may have your ax on the left side of your body, and that would just be mirrored the same as the right side. When I fall, in the demonstration I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be sliding on my butt going down the snow, and I'm going to have my ax in this position in my body. You'll notice how the pick of the ax is on the right side of my body, so I'm going to turn to the right and stab this into the snow. By turning to the right, this is the closest uh, distance to the snow that the pick is in. If I turn all the way to the left, that's a lot more of my body I have to pass before I get it into the snow. If I have the ice axe in my left hand, then it's the same deal. I turn my body so that way to the left, so my pick will contact the snow as quick as possible. Uh, when you practice self-arrest, it's good to practice multiple ways, like three or five times each side, just to remember that feeling. Another common thing that you'll see people do is they won't grip the ax super tightly. So when you stick it into the snow, it'll work its way up, and then you're kind of hanging on it, which it won't allow the pick to dig in as well as if your full body weight is on it. 
So you really gotta hold that ax in place and tense up your body. In this demonstration, I'm just talking about self-arrest for myself. So in this case, the people I'm with, we decided not to rope up for whatever reason, maybe a couple of those reasons I discussed earlier. And uh, we're just going through the snow slope and uh, we'll say that I happened to slip going down. Self-arrest in a team environment where you're roped together is slightly a different scenario. Uh, in which case, if you're the one sliding and you're roped up, you have to twist whichever way the rope pulls you or is going to pull you. So in that case, you may actually have to go the long twist around. Either way, it shouldn't make too much of a difference as long as you get that pick in the snow. Also, if you're arresting someone who has fallen on your rope team, generally you just dive straight down into the snow. When I teach people how to self-arrest in the snow, the first thing I have them practice is just falling into the snow face down. Like I said before, I want the ads in, my, in this space with my shoulder and my head, and I'm going to turn my face down to the opposite side of the ax on the slope. And the reason for that is that way I can protect my face from anything that the, the pick may be picking up from the snow, as well as I can see down usually to my teammate that has fallen or my direction that I'm already falling. So, just get ready. Uh, with my legs, I'm going to kick my feet in and then lift up my body. Here, I'll demonstrate. So they fell. Here you see. So in this position, I'm keeping my body off the snow. I kicked my feet in real hard, so that way they make good buckets. Generally speaking, in a lot of these situations, your legs are the thing that's really holding the climber that's fallen, or yourself, on the slope. Now we will see a bit of a difference with that when we are doing our own self-arrest when we're sliding on the slope, but in this case, if I'm holding a team member that's fallen, I want to kick my feet in really well. My face was facing away from the camera uh, while I was doing that. And by lifting my body up above the slope, that helps press all my weight into the pick and into the, uh, into the snow, which is holding my upper body in. So if you do want to practice self-arrest, move away. So I'll move up to where I have different buckets. This is like the first step is you're just chilling and then your friend says fall. and you go straight into self-arrest. Right. One thing I forgot to mention in my glissading video is when you practice this stuff, make sure all your pockets are zipped up because uh, I forgot to do that. Uh, I forget to do it all the time. And then you get snow in your pockets and in your pants and it sucks. But anyway, that was like a good way how to practice self-arrest. It's nice to have a friend standing like where my cameraman is and watching you so that way they can sort of uh, help you out with your form and be able to see what you're doing from a different angle but that's essentially what you want to do is once you do a couple of self-arrests you get a good pipe of snow it functions kind of like a slide you can build up a lot of speed especially if you're over a large uh, snow field then you can go for a while and build up a lot of speed and then just quickly twist around. It helps to really visualize it in your head beforehand. Another thing you'll notice is, apart from the team arrest where you just fall in and immediately kick your feet, you wanna use the pick of the ax to slow you down a little bit. And once you're sort of at a, a slower rate, that's when you kick your feet in to sort of finish off the arrest. Now this does take practice because you have to know sort of like what's too fast and what's like the right speed to kick your feet in but you want to kick your feet in right when you're about more or less uh, slow enough to stop yourself with your feet. And then you just keep on digging in those feet another couple of times to fully hold yourself in place.